Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be practicing scalar multiplication with matrices. If you want to follow along, the links to the companion worksheet are in the description below, so let's get started. Now scalar multiplication just means that we're taking a matrix and multiplying it by a number. And the way it works is, whatever number you're multiplying just gets multiplied by every individual number inside the matrix. So in this case, we're going to be multiplying negative 4 by the numbers 1 through 9. So that means we're going to have negative 4, negative 8, negative 12 in the first row. Negative 16, negative 20, negative 24 in the second row. Negative 27, negative, no, sorry, negative 28, negative 32, and negative 36 in the last row. So on to the second one, same thing. Here we're multiplying everything by one half. So the order is going to stay the same. So on the top row, it's going to be 6, negative 15, and 7. Now, 7 times a half is not a whole number, so I'm just going to leave it as 7 halves, 0, and negative 11. And so with scalar multiplication, whatever's out front, you just multiply in. So on the next page, here we have these two matrices, but each of them have a different scalar. Now in order to add them, we have to first multiply the scalars in. So with the first one, we're multiplying this matrix by 2. So we have 2 and 4 on the top row, 6 and 8 on the second row. For the second matrix, we're multiplying everything by 3. So we have 6 and negative 9 on the top row, negative 3 and 6 on the second row. And since these two matrices have the same order, we can add them. So if we add 2 and 6, we get 8 for the top left. 4 plus negative 9 is negative 5 for the top right. 6 plus negative 3 is, ne is positive 3 for the bottom left. And then 8 plus 6 is 14 for the bottom right. So for the fourth one, a lot of variables here. Here we've got this matrix, and it's being multiplied by the scalar A. And we have these three unknowns, x, y, and z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply in the scalar A. So we have 2A and 6A on the top row. Then we have a and 4a on the bottom row. And that's equal to x, 27, y, and z. Now, if we set 2a equal to x, that doesn't tell us anything really about either x or a, just the fact that x is twice as big as a. But if we set 6a equal to 27, what that can do is we can solve for that. If we divide, that's 27 over 6. Or if we cancel a 3, that's 9 halves, or 4.5. And so if we want the value for x, well, x is just 2 times whatever a is. So x is 2a, and since a is 4.5, that means x has to be 9. Now y is just equal to whatever a is. So that means y equals 4.5. And z, well, z just equals 4a. So that means, since it's equal to 4a, we just multiply 4.5 times 4, and that gives us 18. Now for the next problem, this matrix represents the price of shirts, pants, and shoes purchased at the store. Now we want to write the scalar multiplication for a sale where all items are marked down 20%. Now when we mark it down 20%, that means 20% we don't now have to pay. But that means the price retains 80% of its value. And a lot of people get a little messed up when it comes to percent change. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take matrix A and multiply it by 0 0.8. Eight, because what that does is that retains 80% of its value. So 0 0.8 
times 16.99, 25.99, and 39.99. And so now, if I multiply each of these by 0 0.8, I get 13.59 for the shirt. We get 20.79 for the pants. And for the shoes, we get 31.99. And all we did was we multiplied this one matrix by 0.8. That was our scalar. For the last problem, similar to the one in the previous video, we have an equation involving matrices. So first I want to solve for x. So I'm going to add 2a. So 3x equals 2a plus b. And then we have to divide by 3. So x equals 2a plus b divided by 3. Now we've been talking about scalar multiplication, and we really haven't been talking about scalar division. And that's because anything that's written as division can be rewritten as multiplication. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to rewrite this, and instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to multiply this quantity by 1 third. So x equals 1 third of the quantity 2a plus b. So first, let's find 2a. So that means all I do is I just take matrix A and multiply all the values inside by 2. So 2, 0, negative 2. 0, negative 2, positive 2. Negative 2, positive 2, 0. So there's 2a. So now, if I have 2a, now I'm going to add b to that. So, cross the first row. 2 plus 0 is 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. For the middle row, 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. And 2 plus 1 is 3. For the final row, negative 2 and 1 is negative 1. 2 and 1 give me 3, and 0 and 0 gives me 0. So now finally, I need to multiply this whole quantity by 1 third. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I found and multiply all these numbers by 1 third. So we have 2 thirds, uh, we have 1 third, negative 1 third for the first row. For the second row, 1 third, negative 2 thirds, 1. For the, fa for the last row, negative 1 third, 1, and 0. So every value here in this matrix got multiplied by 1 third. And with the exception of 3's and 0's, we ended up with fractions. And it's okay to have fractions in a matrix. A lot of people think you have to have whole numbers. No. Fractions are just number are n different forms of numbers, and they're equally valid in a matrix too. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, click the subscribe button. If you have suggestions or problems you want to see worked out, type the comment below. To support the channel, click the Patreon link to help keep this going. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, the best way to understand something is to do it.